Hi, good afternoon to all the students. Uh, how are you? Uh, so you have, uh, uh, for your information, we have finished all the syllabus uh, for our computer architecture. So from now on, I will try to let you to do your self-revision. But at the same time, I will also uh, provide some passive questions for you to try out if you want to do. But let's say if you desire to do your, uh, decided to do your own revision, it's okay. Yeah, because now it's already week uh, 13. So you are free to do your own revision. But if you come to class, I will also give you some uh, passive, uh, passive paper questions to do. If you, in case you have any question, you can ask me as well. So for today, uh, we are very honored to have uh, four of our classmates to present to you. Uh, so I have uh, just, just now checked their attendance. They are all here already. We have uh, Jolene, uh, Lokjing, Hun Kyung, and Isi who are going to discuss about their assignments. So for crossword mark, I will give you by next week through the Google Classroom. So I will just give you through the Google Classroom. Yeah. So don't worry about it. By next week, around middle, middle of next week. So uh, any question you want to ask before we leave the stage to uh, Zerlim, Lokjeng, Poon Kyung, and Isi? If no question, uh, then I'll... Uh, I would like to know who, which group want to present first. Is it Jalim groups, blockchain groups, or Bunkyang group, or EC group? Who wish to start first? Jalim, you I, want I, to start I, first? I, yes. Okay, yeah, since you say so, so I leave the floor to you. So everyone, please listen carefully because these are the last two groups. If you have questions, please ask. Uh. Yeah, thank you. So, good afternoon, Dr. Hong. My name is Jalim, and I will pr presenting our finding on the differences between Intel and ARM microprocessor. Let's begin with ARM history. ARM is a British semiconductor intellectual property licensing and software design company, founded in November 1990. ARM mission is to divide the creative destruction of computing governing the world today from smartphone to supercomputer and the other electronic appliances. One of the major differences between ARM and Intel is ARM does not manufacture semiconductor, but designing, developing, and advancing the reduced instruction set computer architecture for microprocessor and license it to other semiconductor company. In this review, we are focusing on the smartphone Soon, microprocessor and the chosen processor are Intel Atom and ARM Cortex A53. The comparison will be carried out in the following aspects, which are instruction set architecture, data path design, and memory subsystem. First, I am going to introduce the instruction set architecture. Currently, the two major ISA different markers from hardware to software in microprocessor are complex instruction set computer and reduce instruction set computer. Intel x86 microprocessor architecture is based on CISC, while ARM processor is based on RISC. Both, both CISC and RISC are philosophy that cover the approach to design a processor architecture instead of a technological standard. So referring to the table, the complex instruction set of CISC allows it to execute several low-level operations in a single instruction, resulting in higher performance. On the other hand, a relatively simple instruction set of RISC allows it to achieve a higher speed as the decoding process is simplified by having fixed-size instruction. Furthermore, the complex decoding process in CISC architecture requires more power, while the RISC does not. However, the unified instruction size of RISC is resulting in disadvantage 
of having a larger code size, which was in practical to implement in desktop during the era when microprocessor memory is limited, which lead to success of Intel x86 architecture. In short, Intel x86 architecture line of microprocessor is dominating the desktop and laptop market while require high performance. While ARM RSC architecture microprocessor are favored in mobile, tablet, and small electronic appliances. Next, from the table, there are consists of five addressing mode in Intel Atom architecture and three in ARM Cortex A53. Both Intel Atom and ARM Cortex A53 are designed with the same worksite, 32 bit physical and virtual, respectively. Besides the number of core of ARM Cortex, a53 and up atom processor is two and one respectively. That's all for me. So now I would like to invite Lok Cheng to continue the presentation. Uh, thank you, Jolin. Good morning, Dr. Hong and everyone. So I will be okay. So. We'll be looking at the first, second aspect, which is the data path design in our evaluation between two different microprocessors. The data path design is essentially referred to the architecture of interconnection between the functional units, such as ALU, arithmetic logic units, and registers and other buses to facilitate the data flow. And there are two specifications we'll be looking at, which is the first one is the number of register in both of the microprocessor and the pipeline analysis between them. So for the, okay. So as for the number of registers on the bottom, you can see that those are the values that we, we were able to extract from both of the microprocessor, which is um, actually the 6, 8, and 16 from the Intel items that is referring to the general purpose register for 87 is an optional extra 87 um, floating point units register for Intel's in, we found Intel's atoms. And then as for the ARM Cortex A53, we have 31 and 32s for 64 bit and 122 bits. 122 bits. And there are several limitations that we figure out on this comparisons is that um, initially we felt that in theory by increasing the number of registers, we could increase the throughput and performance linearly. But the fact is that from several research shows that as we increase beyond 30 registers, that is actually not linear increase. So then we have certain pullbacks and limitation, which is the because as we increase the number of register, their naming is different. So they've increased in the instruction size and the encoding space for those registers. And also we increase the complexity in the design because those registers are going to be facilitated with the pipeline for the microprocessors. And therefore in the three aspects, power, price, and performance, because if you increase the number of registers, you actually increase the heat dissipation, also the price, but the performance doesn't scale that much. So I think for this perspective, uh, for this aspect, which we would consider ARM Cortex A53 is much better than the Intel items. And for the next one, which would be the um, pilot analysis, and you can see figure one is Adam, 16 stages pipeline, and ARM only have like eight stages. The differences is that Adam was able to achieve like 1.6 to 2.4 gigahertz, and for Cortex, we only have 1.2 gigahertz maximums. But there are several pullbacks from this is that if we increase the um, like 16 stages for the Intel's, we actually have a higher rate of higher penalty for the branch mispredictions. And as more flip flop implemented in the deeper stage, the 16 stages, pipeline from atoms, it has a higher latency. So therefore those are the pullbacks. And the third aspect that we will be evaluating both microprocessor is the memory substation. So figure three so show very old outdated. We have magnetic optical magnetic tape uh, after the RAM. So substation refers to this, uh, the memory architectures orientation to read and write and fetch, uh, fetch instruction from the RAM's memory to the microprocessors and the comparison that we made between the typo there. Comparison we made between the specifications are three of them. First one is the limits refer to the maximum RAM that we can facilitate it and the cache and also the virtual memory. In terms of memory substation, we don't actually have much differences. For the limits, we have 3.8 gigabytes, uh, which is the same between the two processors. And that's actually determined by the number of address bus speed because if we increase it, we increase the um, data size that we can facilitate in the RAM and microprocessor. So for the cache, we can see on the left-hand side is Intel and the right-hand side is the, the atoms. And 
L1 D stands for D stands for the data and I stands for instruction, layer one data and layer one instruction. Overall, it's not much differences. So, and then for the last one, virtual memory, we have like 4,096 kilobytes page size, which is also the same between two processors. Um, therefore, the conclusion that we can make is that if we are comparing, comparing them both on the scale of uh, smartphone applications, appliances, that we would prefer the ARM Codex A53. Um, several reasons. One is that the Atom X86, as mentioned by Zilims, uh, using the CISCs actually have a, even though cope with the micro operations, well, that is actually, actually the reason for high heat dissipation because the, the micro operation from the CISC architectures. And then, therefore, higher power consumption, which is not ideal in smartphone appliances. And another reason is that mentioned by Zilim also, um, the reason that we have x86 architecture lines because that back in the day we were limited by the memory size so that instead of um, we cannot scale the memory so we make the isa much more efficient therefore we have x86 and micro operations but nowadays we don't have that so x x86 architecture is no longer incentivized so then i would say the challenges for both, both arm and intel is that arm needs to improve the throughput clock rate without just uh, compensating or sacrificing the RSC instruction set architectures. But however, for Intel, it needs to find a way to reduce the heat dissipations if it wants to, from the micro operation, if it wants to uh, work efficiently in the small electronic appliances. And that would be all from us. Uh, thank you for listening. So thank you, uh, Salim and Lokjing for uh, giving us a very uh, good comparison between the ARM processor and also uh, Atom processor. Uh, so, any question from uh, all the fellow classmates? Do you have any question for Lokjin and also Jolin? Yeah. If you don't have, then uh, let me ask a question. Uh. Uh, what is the difference between Intel Atom processors and other types of processors that you know? Yeah, can you give? me uh, some comparisons uh, between the Intel i7 and Intel Atom. Why, uh, why does Intel want to create this uh, Atom processor? Yeah. Actually, and this Atom processor, the reason why we chose Atom, Atom is not the latest processor from Intel. The reason is because when we try to compare between mobile processor, uh, we try to label the best uh, baseline as mobile processor, right? Because if we compare mobile and desktop, then the power consumption will be different in very much. So then we figure out that Intel actually shut down its mobile divisions since I think it's around before iPhone invention. And those, Intel actually have a, several families. So the one that we know, the common one, i7, is one family. And another one is Adams. Adams is actually quite old because it shut down afterwards. So that's the differences. And Adam is actually specified for the small appliances, like smartphone. Um, I'm not sure, but if you remember, if some of you remember that we actually have Zenfone Asus from Asus right in the day, but after some time, then we don't see any development from that. So I think that's the main reason from, yeah, the, they closed out their divisions. So thank you, uh, Lokjing, for giving us a very good history about Intel Atom processors. Yeah, indeed, Intel tried to uh, compete with, uh, with ARM processor. Then they created this uh, Intel Atom processor. Uh, they tried to uh, uh, try try to use this processor into the low end market lah, and especially for those mobile applications. However, they could not success. I think one of the reason might be because it is using the Sys architecture. Yeah. Uh, Sys architecture could not <laughs> could not uh, run well uh, in mobile applications. That's the reason why they lost. And then now, uh, ARM processor has already dominated in uh, in all the mobile applic uh, no, uh, mobile uh, telephone handphones. Yeah. So thank you for your uh, explanation. And also, uh, another question is, uh, what is the uh, what is the price? of Intel Atom compared to uh, other processor? Yeah, compared to Intel i7, what is the price? Uh, why can they offer cheaper price compared to uh, Intel i7? What do you think? What's your opinion?
um, for pricing, actually, we didn't do any research on that. But I think from general market, uh, Intel actually have a higher premium price compared to ARM. So, um, yeah, because the one that we compare aspects actually much more on the design rather than the price and the, um, the one that customers see. So, I think this so, is because I, ARM didn't yeah, make Jolene, yes. I think it's because the price is lower that the ARM is now do not manufacture the product, just sell the design to the customer. Okay, thank you for your explanation. Basically, uh, when they want to reduce the price of a processor, they'll, the first thing they might take out is actually the cash. Yeah, because when they take out the cash, they will be able to reduce the cost. Yeah, that is the, that's the way that they, uh, they try to reduce the cost. But also, the reason why they want to create a lower end processor is because they want to target for a uh, for a, a cheaper low cost uh, market. Uh. Yeah, low cost market. Basically, the functionality will be about the same, but the speed will be lesser. Yeah, slower and then a lot slower. Yeah, that is uh, what I know. Uh. So thank you very much for both of your presentation uh, and wonderful presentation. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. If there is no question from other, so I thank you to you. So you can, um, yeah. So uh, we will leave the stage to Boon Kyung and also Isi. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank Blockchain you. and also Jalim. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Uh, we'll leave, now we will leave the stage to Ku Boon Kyung and also Tio Isi. Am I correct? Are you ready, Boon Kyung? Yeah, so Shinshan has no question to ask. Uh. Oh, never mind, yeah. If you have, you can ask, yeah, thank you. I will leave the floor to you, thank you. Hi, good morning, sir. Hi, good morning. Um, okay, today we are going to introduce Intel processor and AMD processor. First of all, Intel come with their 4004, this is the Intel first microprocessor and it power basicum calculator, which is the first calculator in the world. And later in 1972, Intel improved it into 8-bit microprocessor. Chance is twice powerful than 4004. And Intel going introduce another 8080 in 1974. Now the AMD just come into market. This is the first AMD microprocessor and it is a reverse engineering clone in the Intel 8080 made by taking picture of Intel 8080 die using a microscope. So it's, it's just like a clone from Intel to AMD. So you can see that the clock speed, the type, the number of transistor and the fabrication technology is almost similar. Then Intel come with 8086. Then this is the first Intel 16 bits microprocessor. It gave a rest of the 86 architecture which eventually become Intel's most successful line of processor. And it has a cheaper version which is 8088. And AMD came with its 8086 because AMD signed a contract with Intel which allowed AMD to produce this AM8086 as a licensed clone of Intel 8086 because Intel was actually forced by IBM to license its technology to AMD because IBM won at least two CPU su suppliers for PCs. But you can see that they are similar using the similar fabrication technology but the clock speed is different because of uh, AMD used the time to uh, use the time to know about the technology of Intel. And here, as I say, is Intel 2x6. This AM, uh, and AM2x6. This is also a clone of an Intel 8086. 
it is a manufacturer under license but with a AMD logo on it because they are still under the IBM contract. So they are using almost similar but does Intel also have a advantage. Intel and this is the another Intel 3x6. Uh, 3x6 is the Intel first 32 bit microprocessor. But this is also the AMD come out with the AM 3x6. But this AM 3x6 is an Alliance clone of Intel 8036. It took AMD about 18 months to reverse the technology of Intel 8036. And we can see that uh, AMD actually is about copy Intel technology using Intel technology at the history. And this is also one of the example Intel 4S6 and AMD 4S6. You can see that the AMD started to using advanced fabrication technology. They are they are, uh, and the cost peak also increased. And this is the Pentium. Now AMD is started is started to investigate its own technology. Uh, they came into the K5. This K5 is the AMD first 86 processor to be in developed entire in-house complete against Intel Pentium microbook processor range. We can see that the fabrication of technology of AMD is advanced that Intel's and its cost speed of the AMD is also better than Intel. So AMD comes start to stand out. Um, this is another example. This K6 is compared against the Intel Pentium 2. The Intel Pentium 2 is designed for the workstation and the server, and the improved version is Axion. And this K6 uh, is help AMD gain its gains its what acceptable in PC market, and it has some improvement version which is K6 2 and K6 3. Then this AMD Elion. This is the first desktop processor to break one gigahertz CPU clock speed barrier. Elton was the first processor to utilize copper fabrication, which made in the fastest 86 processor in the world. And this is this shows that AMD technology is start start to better than Intel. And this is Axion and Aptera. This is the processor which targeted the non consumer workstation server and embedded system market. You can see and it is similar, but AMD one is the better because it is 64 bits with 1 to 6, 60, 16 cross. And its fabrication technology also advanced that Intel. Then this come to Intel Cross Solo and Duo in 2006 and AMD children in 2005. This is the Intel first dual core mobile processor. Um, this is the Intel Atom, uh, the, the past version. Uh, and this is, this core dual is using the CPU, the first generation of MacBook Pro, while Pro Solo is appear in Apple Mac mini line. Then the children is the processor that, that designed for low power consumption mobile processor. Uh, this is against, uh, against Intel. Then it come out, uh, the latest version, Intel Atom. Then this Core 2 and Pentium. This Core 2 is actually nowadays uh, i Core, Core i7, i5, i3, and i9, the past version. Yeah, then this is come with AMD Pentium. And this Pentium is targeted the against against Intel Core 2 series. Then it also has Pentium X3 and Pentium X4 for the triple core version and core four version. Then this is Pentium 2 and FX series. This is the the 
these two processor, it's let's AMD broke the Genius World record of fastest growth processor by hitting a speed of 6.39 gigahertz on the Pentium 2 X4 processor. And in 2011, AMD broke the Genius World record for the fastest processor by hitting a speed of 8.42 G gigahertz on a FX processor. This shows that AMD started to have some worldwide, no, worldwide acceptable. Then this is the TikTok model. This TikTok model just uh, is introduced by Intel, but now they are they adapt adopt is this TikTok model because the tick uh, the talk is introduced a new feature to improve the architecture performance and the tick it has a power consumption and clock speed. And you can see that the almost Intel use about three years to advance one's fabrication technology and then they advance against the microprocessor, ah, the micro architecture technology. Then they now using the three years one, this, this one, the, they're using the process architecture and optimized strategy. Now I will pass to my teammate. Um, Thank you. So on 2017, AMD start to launch the Ryzen CPU and AMD is actually trying to compete with Intel Core series. And you can see the name is also quite similar. R7 for i7, R5 for i5 and R3 for i3. And the clock speed in terms of clock speed is Intel is better than the Ryzen, but Ryzen have more core than Intel at the time. And at the time, the Ryzen is more focused on multi-core performance for the for, for the design software and those soft, software for the professional. And it also have smaller transistor style, seven nanometer. And the 14 nanometer they use is just for the IO, IO die. And later I will talk about the different die they use. So next. So, and again, you can see the Ryzen Core i5 and Ryzen 5, the performance are similar. And in terms of price at the time, the Ryzen is way cheaper than the Core i5. And I will also talk about that and later on why Ryzen 5 can achieve more cheaper price than Intel Core. For the i3, and yet again, the blocks speed is similar but in this case the i3 clock speed is fixed on the 4.1 gigahertz where the ryzen 3 able to turbo boost and reduce the clock speed if they want to reduce the power and again ryzen 3 are focused more on the core number next next is the more new version of the ryzen 9 and Right now, it, right now the Ryzen is basically dominate the CPU market and it is actually better than the Intel and is also cheaper than Intel in terms in term of performance over the price. So next. So th this is why the AMD able to achieve such, such a performance. So this is a chiplet design. AMD separate a, mono, a monolithic die into multiple die mainly CPU die, com compute unit die, CPU die, and IO die. Seeing the transistor size affect the yield and the performance, so they separate the transistor size for the CPU die, they use seven nanometer, and for the IO die, they use 14 nanometer. This not only increase the yield, but because of, because of the smaller die, it also make the production easier. For example, a single production line produce the echo die and later on the echo die can put on the different type of the CPU. For example, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, or even the AMD Epic, which is still for use for the data center CPU. Next. But, uh, but they, so you can see this is the keynote from the launch of the third gen AMD Ryzen. And basically for the system core, they cut their cost in half, which is very huge. 
and next. But be because of, of the chiplet is separated, they need a wire to connect both the chiplet and the iodide together. So it will introduce a parasitic induction, which result in the memory that latency. And those connection, MD call that infinity fabric. In order to reduce those latency, latency, the higher clock memory must be used. So in this case, you can see on the slide, the one-to-one -one mode mean the in infinity fabric clock is set to match with the memory clock. And using a higher memory clock able to reduce the latency from 83 nanosecond to 67 nanosecond. And next, I will talk about the MD Epic CPU. It is built for the data center and it used the chiplet the most. You can see the die, die different and the size different. And you can see the Epic have using eight chiplet and each chiplet have four core, oh sorry, eight core. And in result, each of the CPU can achieve 64 core. And next, because, because this is used for, used for data center, the motherboard, the motherboard they built is actually can have more than one core, more than one CPU slot. For this case, the mother, motherboard has two CPU slots, and this result, total result in 128 core and 256 thread. So next, in conclusion right now, AMD is winning the Intel, overtaken the Intel. But in recent news that Intel are saying that they will expand their fabrication factory and they will also try to use the new design, which is the similar to chiplet design. So that's all for our presentation. Thank you. So thank you, uh, EC, and also Moon Kyung for giving us a very wonderful presentation uh, related to, uh, to the MD. Uh, start from the history to the end. Actually, uh, the chiplet uh, technology that you meant, uh, you meant uh, for uh, that is used by MD. Uh, is actually related to our chapter one lectures. Basically, if your chip size is smaller, then uh, your yield will be higher. That's why they can reduce the cost, right? So that is a very good example of using some of our theory to improve the you uh, yeah so thank you for your presentation i just i've seen i've seen uh one student raise raising his hand right uh, do you have any question i um, know uh, anyone has a question uh, you are free to ask any question to Boon Kyung and also easy Oh, Wei Hong said, uh, sorry, accidentally press it. Uh. Okay, never mind. I thought he, he has a very important question to ask. Uh. So never mind, it's okay. So uh, let me ask, uh, first of all, let me share you about Intel processor. Basically, uh, some of the Intel processor actually, uh, I cannot say totally made in Pinning. Uh. Basically, part of it actually is made in Pinning. Uh. Yeah. Uh, in Pinning, actually, Malaysia has a, uh, Intel Microelectronics uh, Syndrome Bahad there, right? You know about it, uh, Bunka? You know, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Because, uh, we, we have an Intel there. Because the Intel chip they below there uh, say they're made in Malaysia, then, then most of the chip are produced from, from the Penang. Yeah, correct. Uh, actually, Penang also owns some, some of the chip, uh, own, uh, himself, uh, itself also. Uh. So, uh, when they designed this Nahedam processor, basically I, I was working there. Yeah, I was working in Intel building. Uh. So when they did this uh, Nahedam, uh, yeah. And then, yeah, basically Pinning, uh, Intel Pinning actually produced quite a lot of processors. Uh. Uh, that time they started to make this uh, core processor, a uh, two core processor. Yeah. So that's a very uh, good explanation about the comparison between uh, these two processors. May I ask a question? Uh? Yeah. So if you would like to buy a, a computer, 
after reading your own uh, presentation slides, uh, will you prefer to buy uh, an Intel processor or AMD processors? Uh, if you if you're talking about now, it, right now is it is actually impossible to buy a AMD CPU uh, because of the chip the they are not enough enough material to to do it uh, and also because of the pandemic uh, everyone are building their computer so if they still still have have stock then of, of course it's amd because not only amd are better in terms of performance are better than intel if you buy a motherboard from the amd it actually can support up to around two to three generation of the update i think i think the most is four four generation of update but if you buy an Intel CPU, your motherboard is limited to just two generation. So after two years, you need to buy a new motherboard to for a new CPU. So this is my answer. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So you will prefer to buy AMD processor, right? Yeah. But surprisingly, Intel, uh, AMD is able to produce a processor with lesser numbers of uh, manpower. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, they make use of uh, the, the fabrication factory from Taiwan, I think. Yeah. But Intel has it, its own uh, factor. Yeah. So may I ask another question uh, to EC? Eh? So, um, so in your opinion, uh, uh, which processor will be more durable? You see Intel processor or AMD processors? Yeah. Because we are talking about, we are not only talking about performance, we want, also want to talk about uh, durability and also whether uh, it will last long or not. Yeah. Um, actually, I didn't use AMD processor before. Um, I will get you know when I try it. Um, but looking for the for the performance, maybe AMD is for the for the durable for the long lasting. AMD performance is the that's up compared to Intel. But I think I, 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 use, I use Intel processor more. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so you still prefer to use Intel processor uh, maybe because of the brand, right? Uh, uh, because they have their own pro and cons. This two is good okay, processor. Okay, so thank you, Isi, for thank your you. explanation. Yeah. So thank you very much. If there's no more uh, question for any other, so thank you very much. So we have end our presentation. Uh, thank you very much. As I already stated just now, uh, the coursework mark will be given to you by middle of next week uh, through Google Classroom. Uh, from now on, we will be starting to do our uh, revision. Yeah, let me uh, share the screen. Huh? So let me see uh, whether we have any question to, to be done today. Uh, okay, we have done a lot of uh, revision when we had our midterm test today. Uh, next, is this one, uh, maybe we can try to discuss other papers. Yeah. But for today, if you would like to do your own uh, revision, it's fine. Yeah, you may leave the class and then do your own revision. Because now it's already end of the semester. Yeah. Uh, which one do you want to do a cash? This is about cash and star law. Also pipeline. And then my uh you can focus on one of the questions. Yeah, let, let us uh do this if you once you stay with us, then we will do this question. Yeah. Let me copy and paste the question. And then I will create a Google uh, Jamboard. So this will be the question that we will discuss for the next uh, one hour. By the way, we will be having a uh, 15 minutes break as usual. Yeah. 
So now I'm going to give you a 15 minutes break. You will come back by three o'clock. Uh, then we will continue to do some revision, which I will let you to uh, write your answer here. Uh, for this revision, I will basically let you to find the answer yourself. Uh, then after you give the answer, then only we will discuss. But let's say you want to do your own revision, it's fine. Yeah. You can actually study your own. You may leave the class if you want to do your own uh, revision. Because right now it's already uh, end of semester. You are free to do your own revision. Uh, so I will have 15 minutes. Uh, we will have 15 minutes rest now, as usual. Thank you. See you later.
Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Tiong Le, I have already posted the dates for the exam paper. Yeah, at the Jamboard. So you can actually look at the Jamboard. So from now, uh, you can do your own revision. If you have time, please uh, start to answer this question. Yeah, ask, uh, start to answer A, B, C. Uh, the question A is a theory question. So take some time to read through the direct map cache, lecture notes, and also the uh, the set associative cache. What are the differences between direct map cache and also set associative cache? And also you need to learn about the fully associative cache. Yeah. Generally, fully associative cache, uh, all the lines in a cache can be mapped to any any uh, memory uh, location. Yeah. But the uh, direct mapping, meaning that you can only map to certain uh, certain address in a memory. When you have a set, let's say two-way set associative cache, the cache is divided into two set. Uh, then there will be uh, two space for the same, uh, for, for one, uh, one group of blocks in the memory. <clears throat> so you can uh, have a paragraph reading of this chapter and then give me the answer. Yeah, let me copy this and then I put into the page number uh, two. Then you can try to answer. Uh, from now on, I will leave you to do your own uh, study. Yeah. A question you can let me know. Yeah, I will copy these three questions then. So that uh, when you are ready, please place your answer over there. Uh, the, third, uh, the second one is about calculation of the cache addressing format. Yeah. The third one uh, is about the virtual memory. Yeah, we have done a lot of exercises about cache, virtual memory, etc. So today we try to focus again on this topic. Uh, please have to write your answer there when you are ready. Uh, we will do it uh, using half an hour. Usually in the examination, you are given half an hour for one question. So we we'll try to do it within half an hour or maybe 40 minutes. Yeah, we have with this. Yeah, thank you, Shinshan, for trying to answer this. Uh. Yeah, so fast. Uh. So direct map cache. Fixed location for given block, meaning that if a uh, program access two blocks at the same time, cache misses are high. Uh, but the good thing is simple design and faster access as well. Because if you use a full associative cache, uh, the time required to find your answer is, uh, to, to find the location is very huge, okay? So set associative cache has one more bit in the tag, therefore it's a two-way set associative cache that compares Tech field to see if there is a hit. Uh, the difficulty is complex design. So I will give you a correct association. Very good. Yeah. Let me find where is my pen. Okay. So, uh, okay. Lah, good. Lah. Okay. You can now. Uh, very good. Uh, let's see a big wrap up to Shinshan. Very good. Now you may uh, move on to the second question. Yeah. Uh, no need to be so fast. Lah can actually think about it first. I'll leave you to do uh, because now it's already a uh, final revision. Uh.
जी Okay, Shinsha is doing it, yeah? Yeah, very good. Uh, 16 ray means your cash size has to be divided into 16, right? Yeah. Okay, very good. One block is 16, data works. Sixty four bit. Yeah, sixty four bits long data works. Sixty four bits long data works. Yeah. Sixteen okay. Oh sorry, sir. No, no. I'm just uh I'm just uh talking about other things. Uh these are sixty four bit correct season, yeah, correct. Then you can go and find uh, what is the number of set, what's the bit is required to represent uh, two bytes of data. But the cache has to be divided into 60, uh, 16. Uh. Two max divided by 16, then you see how many bits. Uh.
after you have calculated uh what is what is the number of bits then you can calculate the number of packs. Uh, happy yeah okay you can you can do like this so that will be 17 right Yeah, just calculate accordingly. So you shouldn't just put your number there. Lah. You have already calculated, right? And then calculate the number of feet for attack. Just one byte is now in it, uh one one word is now eight bytes. So. One word is eight bytes. So you have to one data word is eight bytes, right? Yeah, that is a very tricky question. Huh? Uh no, one word is eight bytes, uh sixty-four bit but eight bytes. One word equals to eight bytes. Because it has sixty four bits.
Uh, the bit is actually four. The bit is already four. Yeah, the bit is number of bit is four because it has sixteen data word. So you just put four there. After that, the size of the cache is actually you make it two two mega divided by uh, divided by what? Divided by uh, eight bytes, uh, and then divided by sixteen. Yeah. So your two mega has to be divided by eight bytes. In this case, because you have two mega on me, right? Your two mega. Actually, uh, you have to divide by. Impact, yeah? uh, because one uh, 64 bit long, right? The word is so one word equals to eight bytes. Yeah, equals to 64 bits, right? So that's why you have to divide by eight bytes. Yeah, so how many words are there? Yeah, what's that? Uh, this is equals to. Two to the power of twenty one right divided by two to the power of B. Uh, then you get two to the power of eighteen, right? So it's eighteen. Oh? But eighteen, oh, this one has to be divided. This is for uh for one cache. But your the cache uh, uh has to be divided by sixteen way. Uh. So you have to divide it by sixteen way. So two to the power of eighteen divided by uh, two to the power of four, right? So you left over is two to the power of fourteen. Yeah. Fourteen will be your for one set. Yeah, because you have six. Uh, sorry, for one way. So this a uh, one way. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So you calculate yeah? like that. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So just uh, so you can just uh, calculate accordingly. Yeah? That's why for this computer, one word is one is eight bytes. Huh? So every time you need to read, you have to read 64 bits huh, together. You cannot read one byte by one byte. There's no way for him uh, for the computer to read one byte. So just minus everything there. 64 minus 14 minus 4, you get a 10. Okay, very good. Let's give a big round of applause to Chisholm. Okay, very good. Thank you for trying this uh, question B. If other students have any other questions, uh, answers, you let me know. Yeah. And then steps are uh, around there. Yeah, correct. Okay, very good. Uh, when you have a 16 way, you have to divide by 16. Uh. Because the cache size has to be divided in uh, to how many ways are there? The words are addressed to the half word. Okay. Oh, another thing here, the words are addressed to the half words. Oh no, we have to add one thing. <laughs> That's a very tricky question. Huh? You you see here. Uh, Xin Shen, uh, the words are addressed to the half words, even though you have 16 data words, uh, because the words are addressed to the half word. Uh. Yeah, so that means here you have to plus one already. So here you have to minus one. Yeah. Okay. So that's the meaning. Uh. This question is very, very tricky. Uh. The words are addressed to the half word. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, thank you for trying this. Yeah, five. Correct. Uh, we we didn't see this. Uh, so you can roughly see uh, how to do it. Uh, right. Very good. Next skill, big wrap up to nutrition. Uh. Okay, now we can take correct uh, after we have done all the things. Any other tra trap there, no? Uh? Okay, very good. Uh, so you have to read carefully everything. Uh. Uh, think carefully yeah then only you will be able to uh to to come up with the addressing format sometimes it's very tricky uh, you see uh, the words are addressed to the half word okay wow very very difficult right they say one word is uh, eight bytes but now only four bytes or the one yeah then they have 16 data word they do add one yeah so never mind uh, it's the first tricky question we found. Then please uh, do this one. If you have time, let's try this. This is a computer system at 36 feet virtual address space with a page size of 8K and uh, 4 bytes per page table entry. Uh, yeah, 4 bytes per page table entry. Then determine the number of pages in virtual address space. So you have uh, 8, 8K. 36 bit virtual address space. Yeah, page size is 8K. So, why is, why is the number of page? Yeah. You have uh, 2 to the power 36 bytes. Now, page size is 4K, 4,000. Uh, sorry, 8,000. 8, so, divide, uh, you'll get the number of page. And calculate the maximum size of the addressable physical memory in this system. Already given, right? So if the average process size is eight gigabyte, would you use a one level, two level, or three level pitch table? Why? Yeah, let's let's uh, discuss about it. Yeah, let's let's do the one and two.
eight, correct? For the first question, it's correct. But you have to say the numbers, uh, 2 to the power 23, you give a, give a number, uh, 2 to the power 23, uh, use your calculator and give the number. And usually it's a uh, math, in math, uh, in math, in math, uh, just put in math, will be enough. But you want to put the full page, uh, full page, uh, full numbers also can. So you can put the eight map You can put eight map yeah. Eight mega. Okay, very good. Let's see the big wrap up to Shinchen. First one correct. Then second one is the maximum size of addressable physical memory in this system. Actually, it's even simpler than the first question. This I already take this 36 bit, right? Yeah, correct. It's just two to the power thirty six. Uh. That is the answer. Yeah. Yeah, you can say, uh, yeah, this is the maximum size. Uh. 64, 64 giga. Yeah, you can put it 64 giga. Right. Yeah, 64 giga. Right. Okay, very good. Uh, let's give a big round of applause to. Transcription, very good. Uh, third one will be very tough and uh, you need to justify. 
Uh, let's say you have uh, 8 gig process size, would you use uh, one level, two level, or three level page tables? Why? Uh, let's say your average process size is 8 giga, 8 giga. Yeah. So would you use one level, two level, or three levels? So this will require you to do a lot of analysis. Uh. Without analysis, you won't be able to uh, find out. And then the answers are also very, uh, it's not one answer only. As long as you can justify, then you will be given the mark. Uh. Okay, so how do we do this? Let's say 8 giga, uh, eight gigabyte. Uh. Let's say uh, process size is 8 gigabyte. Okay, 8 gigabyte is uh, roughly equals to Two to the power of thirty three, right? Yeah, uh, eight gigabyte. Uh, you can do up to sixty four. Sixty four. Yeah, here we have eight giga. Eight sixteen thirty two sixty four. Correct. Okay, we have two thirty three. Uh, bytes. So now from here, the page. How many page uh, number of page? Okay, uh, page size is 8k. Eh? So you have to divide by this one, divide by 8k. So this one equals to 2 to the power of 1, 3. Okay, so you divide this one, you will get a 20 eh? equals to 2 to the power of 20. So this is the number of pitch, yeah, number of pitch, number of pitch. So you calculate number of pitches. So here they say four byte per page table entry. So that means that you need four bytes for each of them. So how many are there? So number of bytes, of bytes will be equal to two to the power of twenty. Multiply four bytes. So let's calculate. This one will be equal to two to the power of twenty-two. So this will equal to four. Uh, four mega right? Megabyte. So four megabytes required uh, for your page table entry. So do you want to do one level? A uh, two level or three level page table. Why? So think about the reason why you want to do this. One level, uh, page table, or two level, or three levels. Uh, just try to justify. Think about it. If you use one level only, so directly every time you have to access a page, you have to access like a uh, four megabyte data. Yeah. So do you want to use a uh, uh Buffer look aside table. Yeah. So you can recommend no? if uh, one level means you don't have uh, all these things, you just have one page table. If two level, you might have a look aside table. Yeah. So which one you recommend or you want a third level? Yeah. If third level means how do you design? So let's say your table is here, page uh, table. Okay. So previously, before that, you have uh, another one. This one will be equal to format. Uh, it's not format, la, but uh, for example, la, for this uh, average process size, 4 mega, then you come to here. So what, what do you want? Uh, 4K. Then only, then you come to uh, maybe 100 byte. 1 to 8 byte. So how do you want to design? It's up to you. You have to justify. Yeah, one level or two level. So for me, I will uh, I will choose two level like uh, one page table and then one uh, look aside table. Yeah. So this look aside table you can actually find it in the lecture notes. Let me uh, see. Uh, we we go and see the lecture notes. Yeah. 
So we can go and we have a we have page table right here. After that, uh, we can we also can have a a look aside buffer translation look aside buffer. Yeah. So we put a translation look aside buffer there. Mm -hmm. TLB, yeah. So we put TLB over here. Uh, TLB over here. So one is enough. Lah. If not, then you have two levels, it's very troublesome. Huh? Yeah. So we just uh, design a one level. Yeah. So you just say uh, we have a translation look aside table uh, buffer over here. Translation look aside uh, buffer. So then if let's say a computer want to find some information in the at the virtual page. So if you look at the TLB first, the TLB has no, uh, does not have that in, uh, entry. So only it will go and search the four megabyte page table. Yeah. So this is the, but this is not four megabyte uh, because this is eight gig, but actually it says 64 gig uh, is actually higher than this, uh, more than four mega. Yeah. So let's, uh, this one more than this. Uh, yeah. Let's, uh, Answer like this, huh? then why? Uh, you can tell about this. Uh, how? Huh? So the you can say look, translation look aside uh, buffer whole subset of page table mapping. So yeah. So in case uh on every access, you look up the virtual page number in the TLB first. Then if TLB has no that entry, then only you go to the page uh, table to find it. So uh, this is the whole process. Uh. So you can actually copy this. Uh. Let me copy a bit and I put in there. So this will be your answer. As long as you explain this answer, then you will get the correct one. Yeah. This will be the answer. So very good, Shinshan. You have done uh, correctly. For all the answers. So let's see a big round of applause to uh, Shinsen. Uh. Yeah. Any uh, question you want to ask me before we end our class? Yeah. So for now, from up now on, uh, we'll just do the revision. If let's say you have anything want to ask, you can ask me. Why 2 is 2 multiply 36? 2 to the power of 36. Uh. Shinsen asked, why 2? 2. two. Two to the power of thirty six, maximum size of addressable physical memory, because the computer has a thirty six bit virtual address space. So this is the maximum size of addressable physical memory. Is it my, ah, uh, physical memory, uh, include include also the hard disk. Yeah, in this case, ah, uh, include the hard disk. Ah, uh, so, because it's 32 bit, so uh, the maximum size of addressable physical memory also include include the uh, memory and also the hard disk. Yeah. If not, then we, we won't be able to answer this ans uh, question. Eh? Yeah. Uh, maximum size of addressable physical memory according to this uh, virtual address space because there's no more information, right? Yeah. They don't tell us what is the memory size. Yeah, we, we only have this uh, 32 bit virtual address space. So, this physical memory size uh, is a virtual physical memory size. Uh, yeah. Uh, am I answering a question, Xinxian? Yeah. The, ask the physical memory. Uh, you're right. But in the question, uh, there's no such information. Uh. Yeah, Xinxian. Am I answering a question? Uh, okay, yeah. If let's say yeah, uh, let's say in the question they have mentioned the bits for uh, mean memory is this one, then we can answer. Uh, but there's no such information. Uh. So the physical memory refer to virtual address. Uh, yeah, that's what we can try our best to answer. Yeah. Okay, very good. So thank you, Shishan, for answering all these uh, questions. Uh. So thank you very much. If no problem, then you may leave now. Thank you very much, and all the best to you in doing your revision. 
on this Friday, please bring your books, uh, uh, lecture notes, and come to study. Uh, yeah, if you have questions, then we do together. Yeah, we will do your question. So thank you very much. So all the best. Thank you, Brenda. And thank you, everyone, for spending your time to do some revision. Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye, Mei Lin, Shi Pian, everyone.